Welcome back to Business Office Specialist. In today's video, we're going to look at how to create a block style letter. Although there are many different formats in which you can write a letter, the block style is a very common style for writing formal professional business letters. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to start with a blank document. So let's go into our boss folder and create a new blank Google Doc there. Now with the business letters, oftentimes business letters are printed on a pre-printed blank sheet of paper that has the logo and contact information for the business up at the top. It makes your letter seem more professional and shows that it's coming from the company as official documentation. So we want to leave a little extra room at the top of our letter for that logo and contact info that will be appearing on the paper that we print this on. So let's change the margin settings for the letter and bring the margin down an extra inch on the top. We learned in a previous video how to access the margins, but as a reminder, that's in their file. And then down at the bottom in page setup, we're going to change the top margin to be two inches and leave the other margin settings the same. So now we've just got that extra gap up at the top for the logo on the letterhead. Another thing that we can do with this letter is put it in kind of a very traditional font and size. Make it easy for people to read. Let's use Times New Roman, that's very common, and 12 is a very standard size. So now we're ready to write our letter. The first part of a block style letter is to include your own return address. This is because many people end up throwing away the envelopes that are associated with the letter. So we want to make sure that they have a copy of our address in case that they want to correspond back to us after they read the letter. Now, the address we're going to put into this letter today is going to be in what's called an address block format. So oftentimes, especially in our modern world where we deal a lot with mobile devices and GPS systems, we get accustomed to writing an address as one really long line. But when you're dealing with traditional mail, the address needs to be in what's called a block style that is easy for the Postal Service to read and understand. With the address block format, every single piece of information appears on its own line. So the first thing we put on there is the name of the person who's writing the letter. The example I'm going to use today is a letter by a man by the name of Kermit Doms, who works for Genesis Computer Company and is writing a letter to one of his customers. So the first thing we're putting here is Kermit's name. Then below his name, we're going to put in the name of his company, Genesis Computer Company. Now, the reason we put both the company name and the person's name is because when this gets mailed, if someone were to use that address to mail something back to me, the Postal Service is going to look at the company name because that's the location they're delivering to. Once it gets inside the company, the secretaries will want to know which person needs to receive that letter and get it to the right people. So you'd like to include the name of the person and the name of the company to make it easy to ensure that it arrives uh, quickly to the person it's intended to. After the company, we can put in the street address and then the city, state, and zip code all go together on the last line. And oftentimes the states are abbreviated with two capital letters. Just like that. So that is an address block format. And with all of our addresses inside of a business letter, we would expect you to create your addresses using that style. Now that we've finished the return address, we're going to double space. That means we press enter two times which leaves one empty space between our address and the next piece. The next piece we're going to put in is the date. Go ahead and use today's current date. We'll imagine that the letter is being written today. So at the time I'm making the video, that is September 25th, 2020. Now notice that I don't abbreviate or shorten the address style using slashes. Instead, I'm writing out the entire month in a long format. That is the typical format for a date when you're writing letters. After the date, we're actually going to press enter four times to create a quadruple space. And then we're going to enter in the recipient's address. 
The recipient's address will also be in an address block format, so it's going to begin with the name of the person. In this case, we're writing to a person by the name of Mrs. Terry Torville. She works for Mesa Public Schools, and her address is 213 West Jackson Street. And then the city, state, and zip. Again, go down at the bottom with a comma between the city and the state. All right, the reason that we put four spaces between the date and the address is because oftentimes businesses will use what's called a windowed envelope. You've probably seen these. Junk mail comes with windowed envelopes all the time. It has a clear plastic window built into the envelope so you don't have to write the address of the recipient on there. Instead, you write it on the letter, fold the letter a special way, and that address appears in that windowed envelope. In order for the address to be in the correct place on the document so that it appears in the windowed envelope, we're going to need to add the additional spaces between the date and the address block. All right, once you've finished that address, we'll double space again, and we can begin with a salutation. The salutation is just a fancy way of saying hello. It's a way to introduce yourself and begin the letter. Now, if we're writing an informal letter, we often end Mrs. Torville with a comma and then begin writing the rest of the letter. With professional business letters, we use what's called a mixed punctuation. A mixed punctuation has a colon after the person's name. So you're going to write dear, the person's name, and then include a colon, which is the two dots on top of each other like this. That is the proper way to do mixed punctuation when you're writing a formal business letter. We'll double space after our salutation, and this is where we can begin writing the letter. To save time, I'm just going to paste in the body of this letter. If you are working in my Canvas course, you are welcome to go back to Canvas, grab the content of the body of the letter, and paste it into the document as well, so that you can continue on with me. So here I've pasted in the content or body of the letter itself, and as you can see, a lot of it looks different than the rest of my letter. The font is a different style. It even looks like it might be a different color, like a light, like a darker gray. So whenever we paste things in from the internet, oftentimes they paste in with some hidden formatting options like font styles, colors, sizes, things like that that come in with them from the internet. So one of the things that we'll want to do is to clear out that formatting. We learned in a previous video that there is a clear formatting tool that we can use. So I'm going to highlight the pasted content and click on the clear formatting tool. That will take it back to the default formatting, which was Arial size 11. Now, since we changed the format for this letter, I'm going to come back and change this to Times New Roman size 12. Now I could have just done that from the beginning, but I always like to clear formatting first when I paste from the internet because I don't know all of what settings pasted across, and I want to make sure to get rid of everything and then set it back to where I have it to make sure that it's the right settings and it looks like the rest of my letter. So now that that's pasted in, the body of a block style letter should have double spacing between each paragraph. So I'm just going to come in and press enter after each paragraph and space them out like that. Once we finish writing the content or the body of our letter, the next thing to do is press enter two times and we can write our close. A close is a formal way of saying we're done and to tell them goodbye. Now, if we're writing an informal letter, oftentimes we'll close using something like love. So if I'm writing a letter to my grandmother, I can say, love, your grandson. But that would seem a little weird if you were doing that in a business setting. Imagine writing to a customer and saying, love, your sales manager. A more professional, formal way of closing a letter is to use the word sincerely or sincerely yours. So for our letter today, let's write sincerely yours. It's polite and it's formal. That works great. Now remember that we're using mixed punctuation for this letter. So mixed punctuation has a colon after the salutation and a comma after the close. So after writing sincerely yours, you'll put a comma and then we're going to press enter four times. So we're going to quadruple space again. And then we write 
the name of the author of the letter. So Kermit L. Doms was writing this letter. We leave such a big gap between sincerely yours and the name because oftentimes we sign our letters, especially if we're going to print them and mail them. So we want to leave a big gap between sincerely yours and the name so that they have a space to sign the letter. After the name, if the person has a title, then we can press enter one time, so just a single space, and we'll write their title underneath their name. So those are the different pieces of a block style letter. As a quick reminder, we start with the return address, the address of the person who writes the letter. Double space and we write the date. Then we quadruple space four times and then write the recipient's address. Double space salutation, double space the body, and there are double spaces in between each paragraph of the body. We double space again, sincerely yours, a comma, because we are doing mixed punctuation, and then four spaces for the signature, your name, and title. Now the last thing I want to look at, since we're in this area and we're dealing with professional business documents, is to look at how to translate a document. In this case, Kermit is writing to Mrs. Torville, informing her about the computers. Let's imagine for a second, though, that Mrs. Torville is a customer who doesn't speak English. In today's modern world, where we have a very global business environment and a lot of people moving in and out of different countries, it's very common to have customers that don't speak your language. So if we have a customer that doesn't speak English, it would be useful if we could translate the document into a foreign language and send it to them. So let's imagine for a minute that Mrs. Torville is a Spanish-speaking customer. And we want to translate this document into Spanish so that she can understand it. Let's come up to Tools on the menu at the very top. I, if you open Tools, one of the tool options is to translate a document. So we'll click Translate Document. And we need to give this document a title. Let's call this document Block Style Letter Spanish. Choose a language. This is the language we're going to be translating into. So we want to translate into Spanish. So we're going to come down to the S's and choose Spanish as the language to be translated into. Then we click Translate and it will open the document in a new tab translated into Spanish for us. Now, if you speak these foreign languages, the one thing you'll note is Google is really good at translating words and grammar, but it's not perfect. So it's always advisable when you have a software translate a document for you that you find someone who is fluent in that language to review the document for you and make sure that it is actually written correctly and see if there's any small grammar mistakes that can be corrected. So it's not perfect, but even if you can't have it translated like that, Sending a document that's almost perfect Spanish to someone who doesn't speak English is better than sending it in a language they can't read. So that is a useful tool, uh, especially in our global business world. So let's review really quickly what we've learned today. We've learned how to create a block style letter, and we've learned the order of the different components that go into a block style letter. We've also learned about mixed punctuation, which is a colon after the salutation and a comma after the close, which is a formal way to punctuate a business letter. And we've also learned how to use the translating feature to translate entire documents into foreign languages to assist us in meeting the needs of a global business world. To learn more tools and features in the Google Suite family of apps, check out more of my videos on YouTube or visit torynorman.com.